So here we are taking a look at the musculature of the left leg. Now we have to be conscious of what joints are involved. So the knee is here, the ankle is here, we have then of course the hip here. And so muscles that cross each joint will act upon that joint. Now when we talk about the gross anatomy of this left leg, if we reference the kneecap, below the kneecap or inferior to the kneecap is going to be the compartment known as the shank and then superior to our kneecap is going to be then the thigh. When we look at the collective front portion, this front portion is often referred to as the anterior chain and as we rotate the model the muscles that are on the back part of the body is often referred to collectively as the posterior chain. So here we are examining the posterior aspect of the lower leg. Between the knee and the ankle, this lower aspect is going to be referred to as the shank. Now the most superficial muscle here is going to be the gastrocnemius. The gastrocnemius ties into the heel or the calcaneus via the Achilles tendon. Now, the gastrocnemius is going to have both a medial and lateral head. This muscle functions to plantar flex the ankle when the knee is straight. Now, when we examine the lateral component of the shank, we have to examine this muscle here. This muscle is going to be deep or underneath the gastrocnemius. This muscle, the soleus, or sometimes referred to as soleus, also functions to plantar flex the ankle. The difference being is that the soleus plantar flexes the ankle when the knee is in a bent position. Collectively, the soleus or soleus, in conjunction with the gastrocnemius, are coupled to form the triceps serrae. Now, this calf, if large enough, might be referred to as a cow. Now, on the flip side, let's look at the anterior aspects of the leg. Now, this lower leg will draw our attention to this medial side, to the tibialis posterior. This is also going to be a plantar flexor of the ankle. Now, as we rotate the model ever so slightly, this tibialis posterior is going to be behind or posterior to uh, the tibia. And collectively, it functions not only as a plantar flexor, but also supports this medial arch of the foot. Now, when we rotate the model, this is their tibialis posterior. As we go a little bit more lateral compared to the more medial tibialis posterior, this tibialis anterior functions to move the ankle, but it is going to function to dorsiflex the ankle. That means bringing the toes towards the knee. So the dorsiflexor, the tibialis anterior, is going to be opposite in function to the tibialis posterior and of course the triceps serrae. Now when we look a little bit more lateral, again we're focused on this anterior compartment of the lower leg. This muscle here is going to function to move the toes. This extensor digitorum longus is going to extend the toes. The extensor digitorum longus is going to be lateral to the tibialis anterior. And as we move laterally from the extensor digitorum longus, we'll have two muscles here on the lateral compartment of the lower leg. This is a everter, and this everter is known as the pronius brevis. The pronius brevis, in conjunction with the pronius longus, work together to draw the ankle away from the midline of the body. So here we revisit the anterior shank.
Now this tibialis anterior is located here as we move now laterally to this tibialis anterior. This muscle is the extensor digitorum longus. This muscle is going to be much longer than this muscle located on the top of the foot, the extensor digitorum brevis. In other words, it's brief. This one is long. As we move laterally to this muscle, the extensor digitorum longus, we have now the peroneal brevis and now this peroneal longus. As we now examine the underside of the foot, we will move the model and focus our attention now here. This muscle right here is going to be the flexor digitorum longus. So here we will examine a muscle that is going to be deep to this medial and lateral gastrocnemius. The popliteus pictured here is going to be on the posterior aspects of the knee and it runs in this oblique fashion. This muscle serves to unlock the knee. In particular, it's going to allow us to unlock the knee from extension to then flexion. Here on the anterior compartment of the leg, we'll look above the knee and below the hip. So if the hip is here, inferior to the hip will be the thigh, and superior to the knee will be, again, the thigh. Now, what muscle will predominate the thigh is going to be the quadriceps, and the quadriceps are going to be made up of four individual muscles. The first of which is the vastus lateralis. It's going to be on the lateral side. The vastus medialis oblique will be on the medial side. Now, deep to this muscle here is going to be a structure that isn't observed, but it's going to be the vastus intermedius. The vastus lateralis, the vastus medialis oblique, and the vastus intermedius are going to be the quadricep that only crosses the knee. So the uniarticulate quadricep muscles are the vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and vastus intermedius. The biarticulate quadricep is going to be this structure here. This is the rectus femoris. It will cross both the hip and the knee. This structure here is going to be bipennate, and we'll see that this compartment is going to have oblique fibers that run in this direction, and then this compartment here is going to have fibers that then run in this direction. The rectus femoris, along with the vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, again deep to the rectus femoris, with the vastus medialis oblique are going to connect into uh, collectively the tendon here. This tendon is going to cross over the kneecap and insert into the lower leg. The quadricep functions to extend the knee. And if we talk about the biarticulate nature of the rectus femoris, we have to also consider how it assists in flexing the hip. So here we'll examine the posterior aspect of the thigh. So the thigh is going to be in an anatomical position above the knee or superior to the knee and inferior or below the hip. And so this muscle group here is going to be a muscle group that both crosses the knee as well as the hip. And so this muscle group is going to be collectively referred to as the hamstrings. Now, when we look at this leg, this is a left leg, and this left leg is going to have a medial and then lateral aspect. And so the first hamstring that we can identify is the semimembranosus I will emphasize the M as it is medial. Now the membranosus is going to be underneath the semitendinosus as well as show itself here. And so the semimembranosus and the semitendinosus are the first two areas of the hamstring of which we'll discuss. Now the third aspect of the hamstring is going to be the more lateral component. And this biceps femoris is going to have two heads. One is going to be more superficial and biarticulate. The other is going to be more so deep and uniarticulate. 
The short head of the biceps femoris uh, will only cross the knee, whereas the long head of the biceps femoris crosses both the hip as well as the knee. So the semimembranosus in conjunction with the semitendinosus in conjunction with the biceps femoris make up the hamstrings. The hamstrings are going to flex the knee and also synergistically assist in hip extension. And if someone has trouble recruiting the gluteus maximus, the hamstring can actually serve as the primary hip extensor. Here we will examine the posterior section of the hip. This muscle here is the gluteus maximus. The gluteus maximus is often divided into the superior fibers and also the inferior fibers, often labeled as the inferior and superior compartment. Gluteus maximus functions to extend the hip. Now, when we look at the neighboring muscle here, the gluteus medius, this muscle functions to abduct the hip or abduction. Now, as we remove this structure from the model, we will look deep to this muscle. This muscle here is referred to as the piriformis. Now the action of this muscle is indicative of the original position of the hip. When the hip is in flexion, this muscle here serves to abduct. When the hip is in extension, this muscle, the piriformis, serves to externally rotate the hip. So here we examine the lateral side of the model. We will see this dense connective tissue, the IT band, insert into this lateral muscle here. This tensor fascia lata connects into the IT band. Now this lateral side of the model, when we rotate it, now we are viewing the medial side of the model. This muscle here is going to be the gracilis. As we move towards the front or anteriorly, there are two muscles in which we need to identify. This is the adductor longus, and then wedged in this triangle here is the adductor magnus. Now the gracilis is complemented by the sartorius. Collectively, it's important that we note the adductor magnus is in fact a hip extensor. It also functions to, of course, adduct the hip per the name suggestion. Collectively, the gracilis the adductor magnus, the adductor longus, and the serratorius dominate the medial aspects of the thigh.